What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max have been out for almost a year, and after using each of them nearly every single day since release, I wanted to share my updated thoughts on which one I prefer now, because my opinions have changed quite a few times, as you guys saw in my two weeks later comparison that I posted last year. So in this video, we're going to be comparing the 12 Pro and Pro Max in terms of comfort and reliability, the speed, the cameras, the durability, the battery life, and much, much more. Pretty much everything you guys wanted to know about these two compared after a long period of time. So let's start off by answering a question I know you probably have if you're new here, and that is how have you used both of these phones nearly every day since they were released? And that's because I either switch between the phones every couple of months, or I just use one for beta testing and one for everything else. And now after nearly a year and switching back and forth numerous times, my main device with the SIM card in it is the 12 Pro. And my beta testing device is currently the 12 Pro Max. Now that might sound backwards and like it should be the opposite, but one of the main reasons for this is comfort. And as much as I love the battery life, the camera and the screen size of the 12 Pro Max, the trade-off is just a much bigger and heavier phone that just doesn't really suit my lifestyle as well. So the 12 Pro has a 6.1 inch display and the 12 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch display and both have the same design all around. So we have these squared off edges with the very fingerprint prone stainless steel borders. And of course we have that matte finish on the back. So we have the 12 Pro here in gold and the 12 Pro Max in the new Pacific blue colorway. Now, I have average sized hands, but reaching to the top of the Pro Max is just very difficult at certain angles, especially when laying down on your side or maybe when you're you know, riding a bike or something like that. You can't really use one hand with average sized hands. Like If you have large hands, if you're like a basketball player or something, obviously you'll have no issue going to the top. But for average sized hands, you're going to have a very difficult time using just one hand with the 12 Pro Max, and it also weighs 228 grams compared to 189 grams for the Pro. So that weight difference is enough to wear down like my pinky right here after a while of holding the phone up. I noticed that my pinky, when I hold the phone up for a while, maybe after like 20, 30 minutes, I do notice some fatigue in that finger. I also wear basketball shorts a lot around the house and to the gym, and the Pro Max just looks huge in those pockets, and it kind of just slings all around when inside of those flimsy shorts like that, whereas the 12 Pro doesn't really look or feel nearly as big, and it's the same with jeans or golf shorts, pretty much anything I wear, the Pro Max is just going to bulge out and just makes for a much tighter fit. Now, this won't be a huge deal for everybody, especially for women who have a purse to put your phone in, but for me personally, the Pro Max is just too big and heavy for my liking. However, with that in mind, there are still two major reasons I kept going back to the 12 Pro Max and putting my SIM card in it every couple of months, and those are battery life and display. Now, starting off with the battery life, this is something that surprised me because at first, yes, the better battery life as seen in my battery test video that I posted last year, the battery life was impressive, but that's because both phones were brand new and they were performing at their peak levels. But what's even more impressive is the fact that now, after nearly a year, the battery life on the Pro Max outperforms the Pro by an even wider margin than when they were new. Now, this is likely due to the simple fact that I just use the Pro more than the Pro Max and also in more extreme conditions, but it's not like the Pro Max has not been outside or in heat before because it definitely has several times, you know, over multiple months. But when looking at the battery health, so if we go into our settings here and look at the battery health, you could see a pretty big difference between the two. So if we go to our battery health right here, so we're at 100% still on the Pro Max and down to 91% on the 12 Pro, which is pretty interesting and a little bit lower than I had expected. And I do think that it's because I have had the 12 Pro in more situations where it's like an extreme heat, like at the beach or at the pool, than I have with the 12 Pro Max. But still, that's a pretty big difference there. And also another reason for this is because I've definitely been using my phone more this year than I have in any previous year. So that's another reason that we probably have 91% battery health on the 12 Pro after a year. So 
I will say if you care a lot about battery life, like even more than your own comfort, then the Pro Max is gonna be the way to go for sure. I found myself constantly getting at least two to three hours more of on-screen time and just battery life overall lasted at least two to three hours more on a consistent daily basis. Now, another major pro of the Pro Max is the bigger display. So 6.7 inches versus 6.1 inches. And that makes quite the difference when watching videos, browsing the web, and especially when playing games. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but they both have the same Super Retina XDR display and all of the same features. So there's no benefit going from the Pro to the Pro Max in terms of you know resolution or anything like that. But again, the sheer size of the screen on the Pro Max makes for a much more immersive experience. And these guys also get very bright. So 800 nits of max brightness thanks to that OLED display, and they perform really well under direct sunlight. Now, I have seen some people report that the Pro gets brighter than the Pro Max, but I personally have not been able to tell a difference between the two, and I even took them out under direct sunlight and compared them, and I couldn't tell a difference with the naked eye. And while we're looking at these displays, I did just want to briefly discuss the durability, because if you look closely at my screens, you will see that I'm rocking a screen protector on both devices, and they have both been on there since day one. But even if I did not have a screen protector, the iPhone 12 series has improved glass with what Apple calls the ceramic shield. And this is said to be the most durable glass on any smartphone. So if you like, you know, to rock your phone without a case or a screen protector, you can probably get away with dropping them from maybe pocket height without cracking the screen. But it's been proven that this ceramic shield doesn't really prevent scratches. So that's the main reason I put a screen protector on my devices. And I always recommend everybody to put a screen protector on there just to protect that beautiful display but as far as durability overall i mean both phones have held up really well over time of course i've rocked a case on both devices as well so we're not going to have really any scratches or nicks anywhere but even the borders which are not protected by some of the cases i wear you can see there there's just a lot of smudging and things like that but really no chips or cracks or anything like that after a year of usage but you know i have dropped my phone a couple of times as well and nothing has happened because i have had a case on every time that either phone has dropped. So over 10 months, the durability is excellent. Now, one other major aspect that's different on the Pro Max is the camera. And that's because it has a 47% larger camera sensor versus the Pro. And when I first tested these two against each other, I hardly noticed any difference whatsoever, even in low light, which is where the 12 Pro Max was supposed to shine. But after using both cameras more extensively and in more conditions and more situations, I now respect the 12 Pro Max just that much more because it is definitely a noticeable difference. And there have been times where on my 12 Pro, I would be in low light or, you know, it's starting to get dark, maybe at dusk. And I would have to enter into night mode to take a picture. Whereas on the Pro Max, I wouldn't need night mode and it would just take the photo normally and it would turn out better of course since it didn't have to do any additional processing so i do love that it's definitely superior in low light also the pro max has superior zoom capabilities thanks to that improved telephoto lens that has a 5x optical zoom range compared to 4x on the pro and it can also digital zoom up to 12x versus 10x on the pro and also when shooting video you get 7x digital zoom versus 6X on the Pro. And it seems small, but it definitely makes a difference. The Pro Max also has sensor shift stabilization, which essentially means that videos you take while walking or moving won't be nearly as shaky. And this is normally something you see in higher end like DSLR or mirrorless cameras, but it's actually in a smartphone and it makes a big difference when you're walking and recording something. It actually looks like the phone is kind of like floating. It looks really, really good. So basically what I'm saying is that the 12 Pro Max is going to shine, but only in specific scenarios. Like the main ones I noticed are with low light, with portrait photos, with zoom, and also with video while walking or while shaking. So those are the main areas where you'll see a difference in the Pro Max versus the Pro. But again, those are specific scenarios. It's not going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to tell a difference when you just take a photo of a family or you take a photo of your food or you take a photo of your dog. I mean, if you're just taking regular photos like that, you're not going to be able to tell a difference in the quality compared to these two. But again, the main areas you're going to see a difference are when you do things like you zoom in, you do portrait photos and you really zoom in closely and look at the edges of the person when you're in really low light, you know, you're maybe not going to have to go into night mode on the Pro Max, whereas you will on the Pro. But again, it's just a lot of very specific scenarios, which is why after the first couple of weeks, I didn't really tell a difference at all in the cameras 
But again, after a long time and a lot of different scenarios, now I can see the difference and I can really respect the 12 Pro Max a lot more. But for your average everyday person, it's not going to be a huge deal and definitely not something I would pay the extra hundred dollars for unless you just really need the best of the best. Now, as far as performance goes, these two are identical. So we have the A14 Bionic chip and six gigabytes of RAM on both. And I was not able to tell a difference at all in terms of raw performance here on iOS 15 or RAM management. Nothing at all is different between these two. However, if you are into gaming, the bigger screen on this Pro Max actually makes a big difference for pretty much any game, but especially with games like Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG. So if I'm feeling like hopping on COD Mobile and I don't have my iPad around, I'm only considering playing on the Pro Max. I won't even play Call of Duty Mobile on my 12 Pro or PUBG on my 12 Pro because I'm quite literally at a disadvantage compared to other players because I cannot see much of the battlefield. The chances of me running into somebody on an iPad or a big plus size phone is pretty high. So I just feel like if I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play on the Pro Max or on my iPad. So that's another major advantage of the 12 Pro Max. So in conclusion, after these past 10 months, I have used the 12 Pro more more than the 12 Pro Max and I still prefer it to the Pro Max, but I will admit that there have been several instances where I wished I had my Pro Max to record video and for that better battery life. Now, again, I did mention that it's very specific situations. So like I said, during concerts, when you're shaking around, the 12 Pro Max won't be as shaky because of that OIS, or when you're walking through the woods or on a trail, it's not gonna be as shaky. So those are the times I wish I had my Pro Max. And of course, when my phone dies because I don't have as good a battery life on the Pro Max, I do sometimes wish I had the Pro Max with me. But again, it really just came down to the comfort level for me. The 12 Pro Max is better in a lot of areas, but if I'm not comfortable with it on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm constantly having to use two hands or I wish I could just use one hand and it's tiring my pinky, that's gonna do it for me. That's really all it takes. But again, if you're a woman and you have a purse and you don't have to worry about that, or if you have big hands, or if you just don't mind using two hands. Like for me, I personally don't like using two hands. That's a personal preference. But if you don't mind using two hands and you're fine with that, then by all means, the Pro Max is probably going to be the better option for $100 because you do get some improvements like that bigger screen, you know, the better camera and things like that. And of course, the better battery life. And that's just where you're going to have to make your decision if you're going to try to decide on which one to buy. So if you don't think you're going to mind that bulkier, heavier phone and have never cared about one handed use, then go ahead and pay the extra $100 and get the Pro Max. But if you are not a fan of large, heavy phones and don't need, you know, the best of the best in terms of the camera, but you want the second best pretty much camera in the industry, I would just stick with the 12 Pro and throw the extra $100 into the stock market and watch that grow. But again, these are just my opinions. This has just been my experience after nearly a year of owning both. I prefer the 12 Pro still over the Pro Max just simply because of that comfort factor. But let me know what you guys think down in a comment below. I would be very curious to see what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys have the Pro Max and you love it. So I would be curious to see what you guys have to say about this down in those comments below. Have you used the Pro? Is it too small for you? Let me know your opinion down there in the comments below. And also, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my future iPhone coverage and comparisons. We have the iPhone 13s coming right up and I will be doing a very similar video on the new iPhone. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you stay notified of those new videos and comparisons. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,